I am about to share with you the four scariest passages of scripture in the entire Bible. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Be sure to stick around for this entire thing, guys. I believe this video will absolutely blow your mind, change your life forever. It's just a few minutes out of your entire day, guys, that could transform you in every way. So yeah, guys, with that being said, let's get straight into this one. Also, guys, make sure you stick around for the very end of this video, the final one of these four things, guys, because I'm going to talk about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin, and what that actually is. So that's going to be at the end. So uh, with that being said, let's get straight into number one. Number one is Hebrews chapter six, verse four through six. Check this out, guys. It says right here, we're starting in verse four, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. So what does this mean? This means, guys, that it is impossible for those who have encountered God, who have been become partakers of the Holy Spirit within them, upon them, and have, you know, seen the great and marvelous things of God, have experienced Him, have been delivered by Him, have been healed by Him, redeemed by Him, and know and have seen that He truly is God, that Jesus really is Lord. It's impossible to renew them back to repentance if they fall away and reject God. So what happens, guys, it's impossible for those who know God is real, who have seen and experienced God, but then they make the choice, well, I don't care. I'm going to reject him anyway. That is what this verse is saying. So it's impossible for those kind of people to come back to a place of repentance because once again, they crucified the son of God, they put him to an open shame, guys, because they claimed to follow him, um, they believed in him, but then yet again, they turned their back on him. Now, guys, you need to know, I really don't believe this is talking about the people who are saved. It's impossible for people who are saved, who fall again, for them to come back to repentance after they, you know, stray away or leave the faith. Notice how descriptive it is talking about those who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have been partakers of the Holy Spirit, who have encountered and been enlightened by God. This is talking about a select group of people who have basically seen and know the power of God and know how real he is. It all comes down to what they have encountered, what they have seen for themselves. Because we know with much knowledge, with much understanding comes much responsibility right because what because what you know and what you've seen calls it basically means that there is much more that is going to be required of you so when you know how real god is you know with everything in you and you believe and you have tasted and have been enlightened by the truth of his word and have been partakers of the power of the holy spirit yet you still choose to reject him you s decide you're going to stray, you're going to fall away, and you're going to live a wicked lifestyle. It's impossible for that person to be renewed back to repentance because they made the choice after being fully capable and aware that Jesus really is Lord. They made the choice to go dark and turn away from him, and they once again crucify the Son of God. And there is no coming back to that place of repentance. There's no, you know, trying to renew them because they have made that choice to run away completely. There's a difference between running away from God and then turning your back on him completely. Number two, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 29. Get ready for this, guys. This one will not feel easy on your soul. Just get ready. It says right here in Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to be starting verse 26, and we're going to go to verse 29. It says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fury 
indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he ha was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace. Now look, notice how it uses a descriptive word, willful sin, not just any ordinary sin. There is a little bit of a difference between a mistakeful or a mistaken sin and then willful sin. Willful sin, guys, is when you come into agreement with your sin and you decide, well, I might as well sin against God because his grace is going to cover over my sins. So it's fine if I live in this habitual sinful lifestyle. It's fine if I live in sexual morality. It's fine if I continue to sin against God. It's when in your mind you decide it's okay because Jesus will just forgive it. I can use his grace as a ticket to freely sin. That is willful sin, guys. When you are okay with your sin because you know you will be forgiven. But the Bible says those who are okay with their sin and don't strive for perfection and don't repent from their sin, but they willfully on purpose do it, knowing that it's not okay, those type of people are not going to be forgiven for their sin. That sacrifice is not gonna remain and they their only destination they're gonna end up will be in hell. Notice how it talks about those who disobey the law of Moses end up having a, a um, terrible end, a terrible destination. But then it says, how much worse those who trample over the Son of Man sin against God, right? After what Jesus did for you, you continue to sin and you count his grace as just a common thing. It's okay to sin against him. It's okay. You, you see it as just, you know, something that you, you can swipe like your grace card. Um, and it will just cover all your sins. And then you insult the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? The Spirit of grace, which is upon you and inside of you, knowing the God is upon you and inside of you, yet you still are okay doing this sin. That is a dangerous place to be in your life. Number three, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Get ready for this. It, it says right here, um, we're going to be starting in verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. This is a scary place to be, guys. This very much goes in line with the verse I just read. If you are in sin... If you are living in, in, in drunkardness and sexual morality and idolatry and covetousness, if you are living as a slanderer, somebody who is living in sin, and you're okay with that, then that's a very dangerous place to be. Notice how it says no idolaters will enter the kingdom of God. And some of you guys live for the things of this world. Uh, you spend way more time on your phone, on social media. You spend all this time on yourself, all this time on other things, video games, TV series, but then you put no effort and, and no sacrifice into your relationship with God. Do you think that you are, that God is number one in your life or there's a few idols, guys? Well, you need to be sure that God is a priority in your life over everything and everyone else. You can't have idols in your life, guys. You can't be bowing to the things of this world constantly. We know Paul, Paul says the things that the Gentiles sacrifice to, they sacrifice to demons. So what when you guys are pouring your sacrifice, your worship, your effort into so many other things, there are demons behind these things and addictions and habitual sins in your life that are, you know, ultimately retaining your sacrifice and are retaining your worship rather than God Almighty. So if you love God, guys, the Bible says, love him in deed and action. Prove to the Lord that you love him. Show him how much you love him by your actions, by what you do, not just your words and what you say. And finally, guys, number four, 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now it says in Matthew chapter 12, we're starting in verse 31 here. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. I know all of you guys have been waiting for this. What is the unforgivable sin? What is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Okay, so in order to understand what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, you must go back to what got this conversation about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, what got Jesus speaking about this in the first place. So what happens here, a little few, a few verses behind is Jesus cast a demon out of somebody and then the Pharisees come up to Jesus saying, you don't cast out demons by the hand of God. You basically cast demons out by Beelzebub. You cast demons out by demons, by Satan. And then Jesus responds, how can Satan cast out Satan? A kingdom divided against each other cannot stand. And then he says, but if I cast demons out by the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then a few moments later, after talking about uh, the parable about um, entering a strong man's house and first binding a strong man, Jesus then mentions the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So what is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? According to to the way Jesus answers it after what the Pharisee said to him, it sounds like the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is rejecting the power of God and saying the power of God is the power of the devil, okay? It's basically saying that when a demon gets cast out, you basically come against that and say, that is not of God, that is a movement of the devil that is a movement of satan so when you say this and you come in alignment with that and you agree with that and you continue to believe that then that is you blaspheming against the holy spirit which will indeed send you straight to hell it is an unforgivable sin guys i just want to tell you that god is very merciful and his mercy triumphs over judgment and there is still hope for you if you feel like you are living in habitual sin, you have um, been living a lifestyle that is wicked, I want you to know today, guys, that God is giving you mercy. He has, has his hand outstretched wide, and he's waiting for you to come into a place of repentance and to seeking him, guys. I'm telling you, God is waiting for you. He is merciful. As much as he is just, guys, he is merciful, and he is not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come into everlasting, eternal life. So I want to challenge you guys today. Let these verses impart the fear of God into you and into your life start to realize that it is not okay with what you are living it is not okay the way you are living guys it's not okay to live in sin to live in idolatry to not make God a priority in your life and to prioritize everything else to not come against the movement of the Holy Spirit <coughs> this is not okay guys and God <coughs> wants you to come into a place of repentance so i want to challenge every single one of you on the other side of the screen to repent to turn away from your evil ways to turn away from the wickedness and come into a place of fellowship and relationship and love for the god that you serve the god of abraham isaac and jacob the one who makes a way when there is no way all right guys that's going to be it for this video i hope this video has helped you out and has been useful for you guys um, if you want to support the ministry on here, do not forget to subscribe, share this to a few friends. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about this one. Go check out my merch store. That will be in the link of the description. And yeah, guys, with that being said, you have a great rest of your day and God bless you.